On our other video, we showed how biotinidase deficiency is a disorder of biotin recycling. The gene that encodes the biotinidase enzyme is located on chromosome 3, and the inheritance of biotinidase deficiency is transmitted as an autosomal recessive disorder. The pedigree illustrates an affected child who inherited one abnormal gene from each of his parents. Biotinidase deficiency is defined as either partial or profound, depending on how much normal enzymatic activity is present. The diagnosis may be suspected from neonatal screening, and confirmation of the diagnosis is made by measuring enzymatic activity in the infant's blood, along with an appropriate control specimen. DNA testing is not necessary for confirmation of the diagnosis, but it can be valuable for rapid presumptive diagnosis in some cases and can be important for genetic counseling. DNA testing of the biotinidase gene shows that about 60 to 70 percent of all mutations are due to the eight ones listed here. The nomenclature for the first seven indicates that a normal amino acid has been substituted with another amino acid. For example, the D444H mutation means that an asparagine amino acid has been substituted with another amino acid, histidine. The last mutation listed represents a 7-nucleotide base deletion associated with an insertion of three nucleotides and we will refer to this as the deletion 7 mutation. As we will illustrate, individuals with biotinidase deficiency will have two of these mutations, usually one on each of their number 3 chromosomes. We will also illustrate how the D444H mutation is almost always associated with partial deficiency, except for the rare cases where it occurs on the same chromosome with the A171T mutation. This diagram illustrates how these mutations affect the function of the biotinidase enzyme. Each of us has two normal genes, illustrated by the normal DNA line, and each of these genes accounts for about 50 percent of our total biotinidase enzyme activity. Here we see the effect of the 444 mutation. It reduces about half of the enzymatic activity of the gene and reduces the total enzymatic activity to about 75 percent of normal, so the effect of this mutation is mild. One of these mutations on each chromosome would reduce total enzymatic activity by 50 percent. Next, we see the effect of the deletion 7 mutation. In this case, less than 5 percent of enzymatic activity occurs, and so this individual who carries just one mutation has only 50 percent total enzymatic activity. We then see the effect of the 444 mutation when it occurs in the same chromosome as the 171 mutation. In this case, the enzymatic activity is less than 5 percent for that chromosome and the total enzymatic activity is around 50 percent. All of individuals with these possible mutations would essentially be normal. Finally, we see the effect of severe mutations that cause biotinidase deficiency. In the first example, there is a severe deletion 7 mutation and the 444 mutation on the other chromosome. The combined enzymatic activity is less than 30 percent, so the individual would have partial deficiency. In the next example, this individual has two deletion 7 mutations, one on each chromosome, and this combination results in profound biotinidase deficiency with less than 10 percent activity. The final example also shows the mutations of someone with profound biotinidase deficiency, they carry one deletion 7 mutation, but notice on the other chromosome that there is a combination of the 444 and the 171 mutations. These two mutations are said to be in cis when they are on the same chromosome. The net result being that these two mutations act like severe mutations. DNA testing 
after an initial abnormal newborn screen can provide valuable rapid information so as to assess the likelihood that a baby has either partial or profound deficiency. For example, two severe mutations strongly indicate profound enzyme impairment, whereas the presence of the 444 mutation in the absence of the 171 mutation strongly indicates that a partial deficiency condition is present. However, normal DNA testing does not exclude the possibility of having biotinidase deficiency, and for this reason, blood enzyme testing is considered the gold standard for confirmation.